If you've ever wondered why a long haul or ultra long haul flight doesn't climb to very high altitudes straight away and climbs in steps uh, during the cruise, stay tuned because this is exactly what we will be exploring in today's video. Welcome back. In today's video, it's back to the world of aerodynamics where we will be exploring quite an important phenomenon. It's called the coffin corner. Now, before we delve into the subject, let's take a moment to understand the concept of something called load factor, as this has a bearing on the maximum safe altitude that an aircraft can fly at. The load factor is the ratio of the lift of an aircraft to its weight. If you watch the video that explains how wings generate lift, you might recall that two of the four forces acting on an aircraft are lift and weight, which act against one another. And the ratio of these two forces determines the load factor. The load factor is typically expressed in G units. Now this is not to be confused with the acceleration of gravity, which is also indicated with G. Now during straight and level flight, which means that the aircraft is not turning and is maintaining a constant altitude, the load factor is plus one. To explain this simply, if I hold this marker steadily, it is experiencing a plus one G load factor. During a turn, an aircraft's load factor will normally be greater than plus one G. And this is because as the aircraft enters a bank and it's not straight anymore, its lift vector is tilted. The tilt in this lift vector means that it's no longer equal to the weight of the aeroplane which remains constant and the lift force would effectively become less to maintain level flight. In such a scenario, lift will need to be increased and this is usually achieved by increasing the angle of attack. That's the angle between the wing and the relative airflow. The angle of attack has a direct impact on the coefficient of lift which is one of the components of the lift formula and increasing it will increase lift. Now, as lift must be increased to maintain level flight in a turn, this would mean that the ratio between lift and weight is no longer the same as it was in straight and level flight. Remember, the load factor is the ratio of lift to weight, and as lift needs to be increased during a turn to equal weight, this translates into a higher load factor, which would be greater than plus one G. From a human perception point of view, here is an interesting fact uh, about uh, load factors. When the load factor is plus one G, the weight felt by a person would be normal. If it was greater than plus one G, the weight felt would be heavier uh, than usual. If you've ever been on a roller coaster, you may have noticed that when the roller coaster suddenly goes into a steep climb, the body would feel heavier. This is because it was experiencing a load factor greater than plus 1G. And conversely, in a sharp descent, the body would actually feel lighter as it was being subject to a load factor less than plus 1G. If the load factor being experienced was zero, a person would feel weightless. Just a fun fact. Now let's circle back to the subject of coffin corner and see how the load factor fits into it. The coffin corner is a flight envelope boundary where a high incident stall intersects with the critical mark number. What do we mean by this? It simply means that the aircraft has climbed to an altitude where the difference between the speed at which a stall would occur and the start of a high speed mark buffet uh, approaches zero. Very quickly, a stall is a condition where the wings are no longer generating the required amount of lift to sustain flight. And this is purely an angle of attack problem. Mach number is the percentage of the speed of sound at which the aircraft's flying. And above a certain value, it would lead to the creation of shock waves over the wings that would in turn cause a separation of the airflow, thereby having a detrimental effect on lift. This could lead to buffeting and a high speed stall. Now, in case you're wondering, what buffeting means. This is 
a strong vibration that's caused by airflow separation over the surface of the wings. To recap, when the difference between the load speed buffet, uh, one that would be caused by a high incidence or high angle of attack uh, stall, and the high speed Mach buffet approaches zero, the aircraft would be approaching its coffin corner uh, at that specific altitude. And this altitude is a function of two things, the weight of the aircraft and its g-force loading. In this little illustration, we can see that the left side represents the stall speed of the aircraft that increases as the altitude increases. On the right side, we can see that the margin to the high speed buffet, the stall buffet, decreases as the aircraft climbs. The reason why these two speeds are converging is that as an aircraft climbs, the air becomes thinner or less dense, which affects performance quite adversely. To exemplify this, we can see here that for a given gross weight, at flight level 350 or 35,000 feet, there will be considerable margin between the two speeds, whereas at flight level 400 or 40,000 feet, the margin is indeed very slim. And the point where these two speeds intersect or are concurrent is exactly what the coffin corner is. And as we mentioned earlier, this is a function of the aircraft weight and the load factor. Now, if an aircraft was flying close to the coffin corner, so the point where the margin between the stall speed and the high speed um, Mark Buffett was very tight, even a small disturbance, say due to turbulence, may cause an increase in the aircraft's load factor, which could potentially lead to a low speed or a high speed Buffett. Are something that can be quite dangerous. And the design of modern commercial aircraft coupled with the pilot's choice of altitude would normally ensure that there is a safe margin uh, between these two speeds. At times, what may be a safe margin in smooth conditions may rapidly change if the aircraft were to suddenly experience moderate to severe turbulence uh, that may make it necessary for the pilots to descend to restore safety margins. Here is an example of an aircraft that's flying close to its recommended uh, maximum altitude for its current gross weight and outside air temperature. And as you can see, the margin between the low speed and the high speed limits is quite slim. If you've ever been on a medium to long haul flight, you may have noticed that the aircraft usually climbs in steps during the cruise. And this is because as the aircraft burns fuel and gets lighter, its stall speed reduces. Weight directly affects the stall speed. And as this change occurs, it then becomes possible for the aircraft to climb and cruise at higher altitudes whilst maintaining a safe margin. Because remember, the coffin corner is a function of the aircraft gross weight and the load factor, which is a ratio of the lift to weight. All right, so there we have it we've explored an important factor that limits an aircraft's maximum altitude and why it is crucial for pilots to understand this. You see, given the significance of this phenomenon from a safety point of view, today's flight planning systems and modern commercial airliners incorporate a great deal of technology to assist pilots with your choice of altitudes, thereby ensuring that the flight remains within a safe envelope at all times. But I hope that made some sense and it wasn't too difficult to follow. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or even suggestions that we would like a certain topic related to aviation or flying covered, please put that in the comments below and I will do my best to cover that in a future video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it along. Well, thanks very much for your time and support and I look forward to seeing you in the next one again very soon. Thanks again and I wish you a great day.